Et euh, comme en tant que musicien, qu'est-ce que tu pourrais en dire Mais En tant que musicien, il était, il était bloqué quelque part. Hein. Il commençait, il improvisait bien, et puis à un moment donné, ça s'arrêtait et, et il ne pouvait pas, il ne continuait pas. Et ça, tu penses que ça, ça faisait souffrir hein Oui, je crois qu'il disait qu'il aurait aimé pouvoir jouer comme ça plus longtemps. Quoi. Et euh, tu crois qu'il avait raison ou que si il se bloquait et qu'il aurait très bien pu euh, continuer à composer Moi, Je pense qu'il aurait pu. C'est un, une forme de lâcher prise, c'est-à-dire euh, on, on met ses mains sur le clavier et puis on, on, on laisse un peu venir autre chose que, que ce qu'il a en tête, quoi, en fait. Ouais, lâcher prise, ouais, oui. ça c'est vrai. Et euh, il avait une guitare électrique quand on était petit. Il avait même une batterie, il avait une flûte traversière. Ah, je me souviens pas. Ah si, il jouait de la flûte, papa, la flûte traversière. Ah, c'est possible, mais tu sais, j'ai oublié beaucoup de choses. Hein. Oh. I can hardly believe how those two persons have been together now. I mean, it's been so long time to separate. Right? Okay. But he always thought that music should come to him by like a channel, you know, like when they say channeling. And he didn't feel that and he was really frustrated. He said, I can't hear the music, I don't hear the music. I have to play on the keyboard to find the, the note. And he would find great notes, great chords. And he saw that it was not inspiration. And I, he was quite bitter about that. And I feel sad about him because I think he got it wrong. I wish I, I was there, I was mature enough to explain that to him, then you could have enjoyed more uh, this part of his life. Tu te souviens de la fois où on avait vu Lou Bennett à Paris 2 Non, pas vraiment. Yeah, je ne me souviens pas de cette histoire de Bennett. So we were walking in the mall, I was with my dad, mom, and my brother, and I was like uh, 11 or 10. Some weeks they will have uh, uh, the week of the electric and organ, so in the middle of the alley, they will have promotion. And this demonstrator was playing, uh, and people started to gather around, and suddenly in the crowd he recognized uh, 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 this guy, Lou Bennett, who is a, a, a figure of the Hammond organ, B3, and my father recognized him, and Funny enough, the demonstrator recognizes him as well, and he goes to grab uh, Lubenet and ask him to play on the organ. And uh, Lubenet very simply sat on the keyboard and started to play, and it was, it was kind of wonderful. It was like you felt the music was filling up the space, and, and it was different. <laughs> Did you see the difference? Did you hear the difference between the demonstrator and Lou Bennett? And I was like, yes, I heard it. And I, I felt I, I had, I was challenged and I had to give the proper answer. I knew that the, the real musician was better. And I say, well, Lou Bennett was more professional. And my father say, no, that was inspiration, the difference. And this has been engraved in my brain. And since then, I was trying to figure out what inspiration is. And uh, I kind of find my own way to, to discover that. Uh, on my side, I decided that an idea is just when two things click together. It's when you just have one thought and you make it work with, uh, with another thought. You have one, uh, you see an object and it, and it makes you think of another one. And those two objects together is an idea. And I have millions of examples, like for instance, I'm with my son into uh, this place when kids have activity. And I see this, uh, this system called the spin art that was very popular in the 70s. And 
I'm thinking, well, it's too bad you don't see the shape cre being created because uh, it's turned so, it turns so fast that it's completely blurry and you have to wait it stops. And so I was thinking, but wait a second, what if the camera turned in the same time as the uh, turntable? So therefore you would not see the plate turning, you would just see it perfectly static and you see the ink being spread or mixing and you see the, the creation of the system. I asked Björk to come and play the piano and I had attached a little wire to her finger and when she would play the keyboard, her finger would pull the wire and I had electronic valves that would pull the ink on the turning table and I would have the camera turning at the same time. So we did an experiment like that and I, I think it's the most satisfying part of, of my job is having an idea and really try to make it happen. <laughs> Oh yes, it's recording. Okay, so ready? Okay, go. Michelle, he's like um, very enthusiastic and energetic and very precise and then he has this kind of charming side of him sort of I guess Woody Allen style that he's always he's a little bit neurotic and he's always worried that the world might collapse in five minutes and what if <laughs> And, uh, which I thought it was kind of cute because it's sort of a, a, a problem that it's easy to talk people out of. So it, it didn't f actually feel that scary. At the time, fax machine was working very good and we exchanged a lot of fax and drawings. And, and uh, I suddenly I woke up a morning and I think I had, I had a heavy drinking night, which very rare for me. And the next day I was a little bit... Uh, kind of loose and I wrote the, uh, the story, I drew the story very quick and I was so proud, I was in a hotel in Los Angeles, I was so proud of my storyboard and from the moment I left the room to the, uh, when I reached, uh, reached the lobby uh, to fax it to her, I was worried somebody would tap me in the back, back and kill me and I would never be able to fax uh, the story because I was really happy and, uh, uh, about my drawings and stuff. Well, I think it's kind of a little upsetting that uh, Fred Theory had, uh, you know, been worked out 100 years ago when he had very little knowledge of what's actually happening inside the brain. And have those theory and dreams, uh, especially the symbolic part of it kind of upset me because it's, it's basically rubbish. I had this dream one day, I was uh, uh, an actor for some reason, and I was dancing for a scene with uh, 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 Sigourney Weaver. And so we are dancing uh, like a tango. And suddenly I did her. I dip her and slide my hand under her dress to feel her intimacy. It's soft. 
what is that all about? I don't have any fantasies with this actress, so I try to remember stuff that could have influenced this dream. A, I heard a friend of a friend of a friend saying to his friend who had a day with Gwyneth Paltrow, how does it feel, a $20 million Putin nanny? B, later in the week, I read in the trade that Sigourney Weaver got paid $23 million for the next Alien film. Those two informations merged in my brain and created a new memory, leaving aside the factual information about the numbers and combining the two other parts, Sigourney and Soft. That's why I dreamt I was feeling Sigourney with a uh, crutch. I really had a complex that my father had at some point, that to not be good enough. Uh, uh, and then I decided I would go over it. I, I decided I would be as good as Picasso or whatever. And, and obviously, it's, there is a difference. But I mean, at some point, if you want to consider yourself as uh, somebody who creates things, you have to just ignore all that and just say, okay, what you're doing, what you're putting out is different because you put yourself into it. You have your own way to solve solution, to solve problem, and that's uh, uh, creation, and that's inspiration. And I think inspiration comes uh, any, anyway, so to me. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think she would do that, she said she would do it. Did you see that in the frame? Uh, I can check the tape. No, know. it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe she did it. <laughs> that's Karen. <laughs> well, that's she's Karen, my girlfriend. Now she's wearing clothes. Mm. And I wanted to show you this T-shirt I, I made for her. Can you zoom into it? Or? It's on my boobs. Well, not very much. Uh, big mountains here. So that's me and her. Because I was complaining she was a skeleton and she was sick of me saying that, so she called me a pear with no legs. So that's me, my shape of inverted triangle with a uh, uh, shabby bottom and uh, a big nose, and I'm picking my nose. And her, she's a skeleton and that she's farting, and that's a bucket of pee because she goes to the bathroom every, every minute. So that's a t shirt of true love. These time dreams get influenced not by something you experience in the past, but something you're experiencing during the dream. There is three types of girlfriend. First type would never let you fat, it would really get upset if you do. Second type would not mind so much. And the third type, my favorite, is the one that really actually enjoy if you fat. Only problem is they fat back at you. One time I was with the first type in a bed, trying to find a strategy to discreetly squeeze wind as she was sleeping. I let this poisonous one out, hoping she would not notice she was deeply asleep. And I noticed she's having a horrible nightmare. I had to wake her up. She's crying and laughing at the same time. It was like shit everywhere. My mother, my brother, everybody was pooping. And then it was like a torrent in the street. Oh, I'm sorry, it must be scary. I wonder what it means. Then. All right, hey, good evening. Do you have any bananas? Yeah, sure. Oh, great. Aha! I'm Chiquita the banana, and I've come to say bananas have to ripen in a certain way when they're flecked with brown and have a golden hue. Bananas are the best and are the best for you. But remember, do not put bananas in the refrigerator. Oh, no, no, no. Thank you. Hey, once upon a time, you dressed so fine. Through the bump 
Mick Jagger always reminded me of my cousin Sylvan. When I was about 12 with my cousin, uh, we invented and built this uh, system uh, that was taken a step uh, away from a, a, a zoo trap. The zoo trap is this disc with slots that you turn in front of a mirror and by seeing through the slot in a mirror you kind of recreate the motion. And we did one with a, a disc with slots that uh, and you could instead to have only one cycle, we could have uh, one minute of animation. Alors le problème c'est que quand on regarde dans un miroir, euh, les images défilent dans le même sens que les fentes, donc on a une impression de flou qu'on n'a pas quand les images défilent dans le sens contraire. Et euh, d'autre part, deuxième inconvénient, le nombre d'images est limité. Donc, grâce à ce système, on peut avoir un nombre indéfini d'images. Et ces images circulent dans le sens contraire que les connaissances. On a donc une, une netteté de l'image qu'on n'a pas. Et nous avons fait des flip books aussi, beaucoup. Like we would take all the book of our parents and use them one side to start the story on the other side to start the other story. And my cousin, I remember, he had done this story about his nightmare when he would, uh, he would go to the uh, uh, public uh, bathroom and he would start to pee and suddenly a hand would go out of the hall, grab his woolly and drag him by his woolly through all the pipes and he would merge into a, a tap in another uh, dimension. And he actually had done it on the flip book. On avait commencé par faire des bricolages en Lego. On devait avoir 12 ans, s'amuser en fait à faire des, euh, des petits chariots qui circulaient sur des rails et qui faisaient tomber des poids, lesquels poids euh, entraînaient un, des mécanismes d'explosion. Ça faisait exploser les rails. Et... One time, I, I went to see him and I, uh, I had uh, constructed a turd with a. Uh, Uh, white paper, actually toilet paper that I had painted brown and it was my present this year because I would go and see him every year for holidays, he's living in the south of France and I remember clearly driving uh, uh, proudly, I was in the back of the car and I was exposing my third for the other people to see it in the other car and uh, when I offered it to him I was really proud and it was, it was sunny so we would make a joke we'll, put the turtle in the bathroom, but obviously outside of the bowl, and his mother would be crazy and would accuse his small little brother, and well, it's kind of stuff we are really into. <laughs> Sometimes in a part of the dream I'm doing, just witnessing. This one is about the three little skeleton living on the moon, And they get bored, they don't know what to do. And suddenly one of them notice a little glow and there are those little lights, little fireballs. And then they play all the day, they throw them in the sky and they create these fireworks. And the fireworks we could see it from the earth. So I did this dream like four years ago and just when I was shooting the animation of it I realized that all came from this memory of the painting of my grandfather. He was called uh, Osterlin and he was Swedish and he was a great painter and I had this painting all my life to watch in my uh, house. Uh, my big brother Francois, he, uh end up to be the king of alternative in France in a way. Uh, he, he's doing a printed t-shirt for all the bands, I mean all the alternative rock, punk rock bands. And he started with like two, him and another guy. Now they are like real factory, it's unbelievable. Pour tenir, faire un, un, un sèche-cheveux, pour faire du vent, pour faire envoler les boules de polysirène, qui faisait la neige dans un petit clip, c'était Junior, je crois, le clip. Et il fallait un gars pour tenir le sèche-cheveux, l'aider ou quoi. Et même je sais que je, quand je dans le vide, il, il était dans l'animation déjà. Et il m'a trouvé du boulot, maman cherchait du boulot, et je devais découper des petits bonshommes que lui après animait sous la caméra. Donc, ouais, on...
My brother Tris is very smart. When we were kids, we tried to play chess. After a while, he ate my king, and we carried on playing until he ate all my pieces. We didn't really know the rules. So my other brother, uh, Twist, Olivier, he was the only one that was, uh, uh, that, uh, was interested in programming, because our dad was a, a very good programmer. Moi, j'ai fait de la programmation. Mon père m'a appris ce boulot-là quand j'avais 16 ans. J'ai toujours fait ça, des commandes de machines, des choses comme ça. Donc, de temps en temps, Michel, quand il a besoin d'un bricolage, je le faisais. Comme il s'adapte à ce qu'il sait qui est faisable, c'est rare qu'il demande un truc et qu'on lui dise non, c'est pas possible. C'est euh, ou alors on dit ça va pas marcher et puis il s'avère très souvent qu'il avait raison. L'histoire, c'est bon, l'histoire du film. Voilà, tu étais une, une amie de Michel. Donc Michel était, euh, je pense, fortement amoureux. Et il, faisait, il faisait de la photo Michel à l'époque. Et il faisait des posts. Il, il prenait tout le couloir, et il mettait du noir partout, il prenait le couloir de la maison, il mettait son agrandisseur d'un côté, son papier le plus grand qu'il pouvait, son papier photo le plus grand possible contre le mur le plus loin possible du, du couloir. Et puis il nous tirait des photos de cette fille qui était vraiment super mignonne, super gentille, super mignonne, en énorme, partout, il avait partout dans la maison, on n'entendait parler que d'elle. Et bah, elle arrivait ce qui arriva. Euh, moi j'ai craqué aussi et donc, je suis donc sorti avec cette fille de coaching qui s'appelait Manuel. Et donc Michel a fait ce petit court métrage un peu à, à son sujet. Donc, je suis euh, le grand frère qui fume des clubs dans les toilettes. Yeah, I was in love with Emmanuel for four years and I would always try to get close to her. She was in my classroom. I did this drawing for her, this gigantic poster of my cat. Uh, I remember I did every million hair one by one. I gave it to her. I was so happy and proud. And she put it in her bedroom, but she didn't take me. I started playing drums when I was, I would say, 14. And I was very shy, and I thought I would never be uh, bold enough to have a date with a girl. And I thought if I would play a very masculine instrument, it would help me through this process. And it was a total failure. And this is the time we had the a party in the house of my friend. We put uh, disco music on and everybody was dancing, obviously, except me. Uh, I was like, well, no, it's not really my type of music, uh, trying to break cool. Uh, but I noticed Emmanuel was not dancing either. I was looking at her. And then you got the slow and everybody has to invite each other and the couple get formed and dance around and I'm still miserably waiting on my side and she's there and my friend comes and says to me you have a ticket, she likes you, you should go invite her to dance and so I take my courage and I go to her and I ask her do you want to dance and guess what she said, no and I ask why? You're too tiny. I'm so tiny, I'm so tiny. It would take a million steps to reach you. Not so shiny, I feel crappy. I'm so tiny, I'm so tiny, I'm so tiny. My crap is the size of a grain of rice. Not so shiny.
he's my son. Ça va, Paul ouais, C'est le tournage, je t'ai dit. Ouais. Tu, tu me suis en bateau pour qu'on te voit derrière Non, mais là, il n'y a plus rien à faire. Il est directing your film right now. Et so, what, what, what is your film about Voilà. En fait, c'est un petit, enfin, moi, je suis le tueur. Et c'est un petit qui, euh, comment ça s'appelle il, euh, il tue des gens, mais parce qu'en fait, sa mère, elle, a, elle était, tu vois, elle était méchante et elle l'a elle tapé et tout. Et en fait, Romain Aurélie, c'est des jeunes qui ont pris cette vacance, qui ont pris cette maison pour euh, les vacances. Uh -huh. Et euh, et après, voilà, quoi, il, dès qu'elle qu euh, lâche les clés par terre, et ben on me voit apparaître, mais elle ne le voit pas. Et après, le soir, Romain se lève et tout. Moi, je l'étrangle dans les toilettes. Et euh, Paul après, après, elle commence à taper, elle prend sa ceinture d'eau, je fais non, non, non Après, non mais tu vois, ça fait trop bien. Après, elle me donne un coup de ceinture, tu vois, on avait fait, on avait fait un trait au bic qui, qui était euh, bien, euh, qui était à la, à, la, à la longueur du stylo et tout. Ouais. On, aurait, on aurait vraiment dit, et après, après, elle me fait, viens ici, non Après, elle m'enferme dans le placard et tout, tu vois. I had memories of maybe 10 principles that different people taught me during my life that I use every day in, in a way, in an abstract way. Like to give you an example, but that was when I was really young. Like one, I remember my teacher when he explained me what infinity is. He took a, a ruler and he went on the blackboard and he started to, with a shock, trace a, a horizontal line. But then he started to write the line on the wall. And then he opened the door and he went with his ruler out uh, in the corridor. And then he left for 10 minutes. And then he came back and he said, and I could uh, live for hours and hours and for the rest of the time. That's infinity. I remember when my mother uh, taught me how we were not falling when the earth was upside down. She took an orange and stick some matches in it and make it turn and explain us like it was no upside down and no uh, top and bottom, it was all a sphere. I was really, really young and when she showed show that to me and I was really intrigued and really ready to capture all those information. My mother's father was an inventor. He invented a lot of stuff, like the clavioling in the late 40s. Uh, that was uh, like one of the first synthesizers. Uh, he was living in his attic next house to ours. Uh, and I was the only one to have interest and listen to his music and stories. I remember staying behind him and making faces. His head looked like an egg, and I was wondering if there would be a yolk if I cracked it open. Maybe he would carry on playing like a running headless chicken. Yeah, my grandparents were living next door to us and my grandmother would come and visit us and sometimes maybe she was kind of drunk or something. She got upset because my bed was not done. And she just turned the mattress on the side, exposing all my secret porno drawing to all the family. When I was at school, I was uh, always the one good at drawing. And I had invented this method to draw a naked woman that everybody could use. And I told all my uh, friends that's cool to do it. So yeah, I still have this feeling that my hands are huge. Like, like they are filling up all the space. I'm like, if I don't look at them, like let's say I have an anxiety, I don't look at them I'm holding the phone. I think my hand is big like that, on the phone is big like that. I don't know if it means anything, but I think it's... I feel that I have a smaller hand inside my hand that cannot reach the end of the fingers.
Allô Allô maman, c'est Michel. Michel, oui. Ça va Je voulais que tu me racontes le cauchemar. Je sais quand je me réveillais et tout. Oui, oui. Quand t'étais un petit peu plus grand, tu m'as donc raconté que c'était une succession de I qui rentraient dans un rond. Des bâtons qui rentraient dans un rond. Et tu l'avais même dessiné. Bah, c'est tout, tu savais pas. Euh, tu sais, euh, longtemps j'ai essayé de te demander d'en de, de parler et tout, il n'y avait pas moyen. Et juste une fois, euh, tu m'as dit ça, tu m'as dit, euh, et puis tu l'as dessiné. Ouais, ouais. Et je me souviens que c'était quand même assez grand parce que j'avais. C'était à l'époque, j'avais dit que c'était le. le principe masculin qui est rentré dans le principe féminin. Je suis très veillée et on t'en de lever. Il commence à courir partout dans la maison. Alors on essayait de te rattraper, on avait beaucoup de mal parce que tu courais partout. Tu, tu, tu courais partout euh, en, te, en te frottant les mains, en te, en te tirant les mains, en te frottant. Most of living species have been dreaming since apparition of birds half a billion years ago, constantly. Since natural selection has carried this faculty through evolution until now, dream must have a survival function. What is it then? Lately we went to a restaurant with Paul and my dad's family. Paul noticed my stepmother's hair and said, Hey Nicole, you don't have any grey hair. She blushed. Later, I watched Discovery Health. I saw this old man who was losing his hair and his words. He made me think of my dad just before he passed away. So in my paradoxal sleep, my brain combined those two events into this dream. Nicole with tiny, tiny gray hair. I wake up really sad. So, here's my theory. As we dream, we unleash deep forgotten emotion Then you wake up in the morning and you need a mate to be close with. I think dreams make us want to cuddle in the morning and this may have helped keep the structure of the family across the millennium. This is my route back home from school. I've calculated that I must have walked it like 2,000 times from first to ninth grade. Somehow, this route must be engraved in my brain. I mean, physically engraved. I get each corner of the street, the tree, root, garden, brick wall, must be imprinted in my cells. Maybe if I dissolve my brain in acid, we could see the shape of the streets, as well as my house map. It reminds me of an experiment I did at 13. I wanted to engrave my own voice on a record. So I took a matchbox, and I put a needle in it, and I forced the needle into the last groove. I yelled as loud as I could in the box, and when I played the end of the record, I could hear, very faintly, the sound of my own voice. son univers d'aujourd'hui avec l'univers de, de sa jeunesse. Hein, il, toutes ses, la moitié de ses clips sont des délires d'enfance, des rêves qu'il a eu, des souvenirs d'un de, moment précis de son enfance, chose que moi j'ai beaucoup moins, parce que moi je ne regarde pas tellement en arrière, je suis toujours un genre à foncer, un peu tête baissée. Je pense que lui, tout ce monde-là, c'est là-dedans qu'il va piocher toute son énergie et toute grande partie de ses sources d'inspiration d'aujourd'hui viennent de, de ses souvenirs d'enfance. We sort of done all the stuff you can do about your childhood. There's only so much you can be nostalgic. So it'd be curious when we work next together, like how we are gonna handle the the modern age <laughs> without forests and beasts and <laughs> and hairy things. 
I have to say, I mean, I lived in the same house since, from, since I was born till when I was uh, 18 or 19. I, I would say I dream three times a week uh, uh, that I'm coming back. And I'm saying, that's great. I've been dreaming so many times that I was coming back in the house. And now, finally, for real, we are living back together in the house. And obviously, it's still a dream. This is really an obsession. And sometimes I wake up very sad. And I, I had this time this, this dream. I walk and I see all, all the wall of the house, all the configuration. I push the door of all the room. But it was like if it was underwater, so I was wearing this spaceship red outfit. And there is always this weird feeling of being at night and being awake. And then I go into the bathroom and uh, I see myself in a mirror. But instead of me, there was a very old man. So I wake up thinking, wow, that's a cool idea. Let's do a short film about it. I'm a genius. Two months later, I watched a video of 2001 Space Odyssey, and my dream was a total rip-off of Kubrick's movie. So I shot it anyway, for this DVD. For the first time in 20 years, I went back to my real childhood house. I thought it would cure my obsession. But last week, I dreamt I was again coming back to live in the house. I called my brother. Hey, Twist, guess what? I've been dreaming all my life I was coming back home to live in the house. And I even shot a film about it. And now, it's for real. I can't believe it. Dis-moi pourquoi tu ne veux pas venir euh, au bureau aujourd'hui. Je vais demander pourquoi elle ne veut pas venir aujourd'hui. Parce que, bon, je ne comprends pas ce que disent les gens, donc euh, je m'ennuie quelque part. Oui, mais tu vas rester euh, donc planté à la maison toute la journée Je vais aller prendre le petit déjeuner dehors. <coughs> Mais enfin, tu, quand même, tu peux venir quand même avec moi au travail et tu, euh, tu et après je te raccompagne ou quelqu'un te raccompagne. Ça te fait avoir, ça te fera voir un autre quartier. Oui, mais j'aime pas, j'aime pas tellement me balader dans la rue comme ça tout seul. Je te donne like to walk on our own in the street. Ça, 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 ça te fait peur T'as peur de te perdre Oui, oui. She's scared to be lost. How does she like staying here at the apartment Ça te fait plaisir de rester à l'appartement Oui. C'est it's not very exciting for. C'est pas plus. <laughs> tu préfères être chez toi à, à te faire chier euh, que de venir ici de vous voir à New York. Bon, je vais venir avec toi. Ah. She just made the decision she would come uh, to see me at work. <laughs> c'est vraiment c'est le truc forcé là. <laughs> I, I had to put her in front of the camera to make her move. On she, prend, she, prend, she, prendre un petit déjeuner euh, Oui. Là, oh, she, um, she made me promise we have a breakfast together. <laughs> I am hungry. <laughs>